In today's video, we discuss metabolic damage. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and today's video is about the topic of metabolic damage. And before we take one step further in this video, I want to go ahead and state for the record that I do not believe in metabolic damage as it relates to our metabolisms and metabolic processes, okay? I want to talk about the history of the term metabolic damage, how it came to be, why there was so much pushback, and where we currently stand, because there is some middle ground, and there is definitely a place where we can get that is not the best when it comes to metabolic adaptations during fat loss, and I talk about this quite a bit. But first things first, we are less than two weeks away from my bodybuilding show, the OCB Florida West Coast Classic, on November 11th. There are no, no late fees, no late registrations, and we are already at 20% more competitors than we had last year, which is amazing because I've seen a lot of the competitions have fewer numbers this year. My show has, has done well, and I'm excited about that. Um, and as you can see, like look at this trophy. Like this thing is massive. Like I went all out for awards, no, no medals. We're getting giant trophies to everybody. Sorry for that, guys. Go to tampanatural.com, check out the show, and let's talk about the process. So, years ago when I first got into coaching and I did not really understand the, the, the subject of metabolism, of metabolic adaptation. And for those that are wondering, you know, you hear the word metabolism a lot. What does it mean? It's basically just all the processes that go on in your body that burn calories, right? So. It's, it's a huge undertaking, right? You can't just say metabolism and, and, and associate it with one thing. There's so much going on at play. So it's all of the things that go on in your body, all of the chemical processes that burn calories. So what did Lane mean when he came out with the term metabolic damage? I'm not sure he coined the term, but he was the one that took the most heat for it and got a lot of credit for it. Well, basically what Lane saw early on in coaching, and um, this was something I was witness to before I was working with a lot of clients, was that clients would come to him who had been working with coaches who had a very low calorie, high cardio approach, meaning, you know, sub 1,000 calories, sometimes I've seen as low as 500 calories a day, doing two to three hours of cardio a day. They would reach this place and not be able to lose weight. So, this became known as metabolic damage because if you just do the calculations for calories burned, so let's say you get on a cardio machine and you do cardio for an hour, it'll say, oh, you burned 400 calories, right? Then you go home and you eat your 500 calories for the whole day. Then you add into that NEAT, your training session, NEAT being non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and you figure out, well, I should be burning about 2,000 calories a day and I'm only taking in 500, I'm not losing weight. We termed this, not me, coaches such as Lane termed this metabolic damage. I think it was a little bit short-sighted to use the word damage, but you can see where the application is. Basically, your body is not responding as predicted. What we now know, what I now know, because I did not get the, this is the great thing about educating yourself and being a part of this journey, is now that I've worked with so many clients and I've gone back to school and I've started undertaking, you know, being more educated, being a better coach, understanding the process well, because it's something I'm very interested in. I would love to know more and more and more about metabolism, is that our metabolisms adapt. So when you get on that cardio machine and you put in your weight and it tells you how many calories you burned, that is not an accurate representation of how many calories you burned. No, that is a calculation based on some metrics that don't apply to you, right? Our bodies become more and more efficient. Think about the marathon runner. A marathon runner's body becomes very efficient. It requires less calories to use as fuel because it gets so good at endurance. Now, the reason I use a marathon runner is because some of these competitors and people who are on fat loss phases that would come to Lane and come to me basically were endurance athletes. They were doing two, three hours of cardio a day plus their training on such low calories that their bodies became very adapted. So no longer did their bodies require this many calories to operate. This is where we got the term. Now, as you can imagine, 
someone who's in that position, very low calorie, very high cardio, then goes on a high calorie binge, maybe for a couple days, a couple weeks, I've even seen longer, like a month or more, right? And they put on 20, 30 pounds of body fat. Well, there is a slight benefit to your metabolism when you overeat. But the problem is that it's compounded because you also put on body fat rapidly. So you put on body fat rapidly, you kind of freak out a little bit, you go back to your 500 calorie diet, you negate the benefits of your metabolism building up and you put it right back into a, I guess you could call it a defensive state, an adapted state, an efficient state where it thinks, okay, we're back in that mode where we're endurance athletes. So now you put on a bunch of body fat and your metabolism is still what we would call slow, meaning that it is adapted in a very efficient manner, meaning it doesn't require a lot of calories for your body to operate. So your body gets very good at storing body fat very quickly. So binge restrict, binge restrict becomes body fat, body fat going up, metabolic rate staying the same, okay? That's where the term comes from. We now know that it is not damage. I think the term damage, when we hear metabolic damage, it implies that something is broken. Absolutely nothing is broken. In fact, your body is actually operating as it should. These metabolic adaptations are what allow us to function. Otherwise, we would not be able to survive on 500 calories and hours of cardio and training a day. And yet we do. And in yet, people get into fantastic condition. And in fact, as I've been coaching longer, my thoughts on contest prep coaching have changed. You see, I used to always try to do things the right way and make sure my clients were healthy and, and err way on the side of caution. And I, I would, I would almost avoid putting someone in a bad position because I was more concerned about their well-being. And what I've learned is that as competitors, as long as you're educated, they are very driven. I am very driven. I want to do whatever it takes to get into contest shape. And so what I've learned to do as a coach is have these conversations where I make sure we understand what's going on, what needs to be done. And if we're all in agreement that the only way to get there is lowering calories, increasing cardio, sometimes doing double cardio sessions, well, damn it, that's what we're going to do. But we are going to make sure we understand the process, we understand the pitfalls, and how to get out of that state. That's how we avoid getting into a very, very bad place post-show. Yes, body fat is healthy. Yes, overeating is healthy when you've been in a calorically restrictive state. But we don't want to get into a bad psychological position where you're not happy with your body composition, you're not happy with how you look and feel even though you've been working your butt off. So that's what it comes down to, okay? The word damage is misleading. There's no damage, there's just adaptations, okay? Now, from our perspective, it may feel like damage because even though we may get to a place where we're 30, 40 pounds overweight, we're doing hours of cardio, we're restricting calories, we're not losing weight, that might feel off. But for your body, that's just an adaptation. Basically an adaptation for survival. Your body doesn't know that it's supposed to be on stage in a bikini in six weeks, right? Your body only knows, I'm taking in this much, I'm burning this much. We need to survive, we need to function. The brain alters your body's chemistry and makes sure that that happens. That's gonna be it for me today, guys. I just had an amazing weekend in DC. I'm getting ready to go down to nationals, NPC nationals in Miami in three weeks. And in two weeks, I've got my bodybuilding show. So if you guys have any questions or comments, hopefully I was able to clarify that. And um, I hope I don't get too many negative statements about the fact that I use the word metabolic damage, but I've never actually made this video. I wanted to discuss the actual term because I still get the question about metabolic damage. I still get emails saying, hey, I feel like I have metabolic damage. And although I know where it comes from, I know it comes from a good place, I wanted to just clarify it so that it becomes a part of the vernacular, that we don't use the word damage as much and just use adaptation. So you become metabolically adapted to your lifestyle. You're not damaged, you're not broken. Um, the recovery process might take a little while, but we can get there. As always guys, questions, comments below, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.